Thank you. Yes. Are you happy now? More than I've ever been in my life. Uh, that's what I can say. <laughs> Simple uh, question, good answer. Yeah. No, I, thanks. <laughs> I was going to go into the categorization of emotions and language and stuff. But <laughs> no, no, yes, more than, and I'm more self-aware than I've ever been in my life. I'm more motivated, I'm more driven. Uh, I've found something that I cry about. I can't, I, can't, I can't stop myself. Whenever it comes up, I can't stop myself. Um, so, yes. Yes, great. <laughs> uh, anyone else would like to ask Heston a question? Yeah, the other uh, lady there in the white top, that's you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Heston. Hello. Um, I remember watching videos of you some years ago when I was an engineer and I could connect because of the science background and then I turned into chef. I opened my restaurant and now I'm in the whole new wave of, of plant-based restaurants and I wonder how I can apply this quantum gastronomy into the daily operational <coughs> life of a chef that owns a restaurant. When you, okay, I'll try to do this simply. Say, say plant-based food. I won't go into the work that we're doing on the vibrational energy of water. You can change the structure. I have a photo on my phone. We've been, we've, we've been doing months of experiments with Dimitri here um, in the lab. Some of them with Emuto, who's now dead, Professor Emuto's assistant. But Dimitri did one where he took uh, two grains of rice, uh, Kamar Gazman rice and water, two radios, two cupboards. And every morning at half past eight, he played Hitler's speech to one and Martin Luther King's speech to another. My phone's upstairs, um, but you can see the photo. One smells of vomit, the other one smells of honey and cheese. It's got green, green layers like on it, like lasagna. The same rice and the same water were subjected to two different vibrations from two different intentions. And the difference is incredible. We've done it with yeast, we've done the rice, how many times? Six, we've done it in Greek, done it in English, we've done it with written word, no, speaking, no speaking, and we're using singing bowls, we made ice cream with just different, different, uh, many, many things, many things. So my suggestion, or my advice would be, you know, we had a venison farmer in Ireland, uh, Dennis, in Downpatrick. He said something really powerful to me. He said, uh, it, it, they're wild venison, and he fought for three years with the council to have venison coming into the slaughterhouse in two, because he said that they, they heard us, they, they, they're together. Bring them in. Every, we don't cook much meat in the restaurant, never have done. But I've been to every single farm, and I've seen the farmer with the animal, and I've been see, seen them slaughtered. And he got, um, what's her name? Who's the lady that's got um, autism? She's done a TED talk. Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> it's a green panel. I stood there. They trotted in. They looked at me. They trotted round. And there was a bloke above them with a, with, with a stun gun. Poof, poof. So for maybe three seconds, one of them thought, more, oh, what's going on? Shit. That was it. And he said to me, I thought, I said to myself, if in principle I could not kill an animal for the purpose of eating it, I do not deserve to eat meat. And I thought that was a fantastic way of putting it. If someone wants to be vegan because they love being vegan, fantastic. But a leaf is a living thing. A flower is a living thing. Do we pollinate wheat? Or did wheat pollinate us to pollinate wheat? Or both? So I would say that the more we can eat to feel fulfilled as opposed to feeling full, the less we can eat with guilt, the less we don't need to feed the ducks and feed people. The world has a massive, we throw so much food away. 72% of the world is water, 72% of our bodies are water. So why does not everyone on this planet have access to drinking water? It doesn't matter if it's got some chemicals in it for now, it's a starter at least. 
Why does not everyone on this planet have access to something to eat? Where these companies are making millions and millions and millions of pounds. It, it just doesn't make... It, it, it makes sense because we invented money. But to me, it doesn't make sense. And I might not make much of a difference, but I'm going to die trying. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, Heston. I think we have just about got time for one more question. If okay, that's I'll right. try and keep it short. I'll, <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. Uh -huh. Right, final question, please, from the <laughs> lady in the back, in the middle. Heston, that was really beautiful and Thank unexpected. You. Thank you. I also have had a career in food, and then I now work in coaching people around self-healing from trauma. And I'm oh, very oh, oh. moved by your talk, and I also very recently learned how to cry, which is something that we lose often when we're told to grow up uh, at the age of three. The, the moment we start learning language, it changes. 100% with you. In every, every human being has trauma of different shapes and forms. Everyone. The worst thing we can do, I believe, <clears throat> and, and we all, all children have different defense mechanisms. Me, my defense mechanism was basically fighting. I, ki I, I kicked box for 17 years before I was a chef. Other people's, they run away. Other people's, they ignore, they just go quiet. Other people, they laugh. Other people, they lie, gossip. There's just, these are defense mechanisms from childhood trauma. So. When I mentioned the hero's journey, if, if I could just say, <clears throat> please, 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 watch Ken Robinson's TED talk. It's incredible. Going back to childhood trauma, if you could embrace, it's easier to climb Everest, run a marathon, run two marathons in a day. That I can do. Pulling out the stuff that's inside you, unaware stress, is the thing that's going to kill the alleys to Alzheimer's, the inflammation, the autoimmune system. I'm sure also you know talk about the Gab Gabba Mate, Dr. Gabba Mate's work, which is also incredible. Amazing. It's amazing. Thank <clears> you. <throat> so I just wanted to ask a question related to that and, and a quote that um, I think is really important, which is, I couldn't heal because I kept pretending I wasn't hurt. Oh, yeah. And that's the story of many of us. Um, so my question, and I'm glad you raised Gabor Mate. I hope people also watch. He has a movie on Netflix right now. Uh, called um, the, Wis the, Wisdom the Wisdom of Trauma. Yes. Yeah. And I wanted to ask, how would you define trauma? Because I think the answer to this can help people understand <clears throat> that everyone has it. Well, there's, there's childhood trauma. In fact, there's, I'll go back to the grains of rice. What we found... Um, using Professor Imuto's work on rice, and we work with his assistant. Three jars of rice. Every day you give one love and gratitude. You can use words, but you have to have the intent inside. Uh, the other one, you say, I hate you, you're useless, you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. And the middle one, you ignore. Oh, ignore your children if they scream. Just, just leave them be. Ignore them and then give them love. I'm, going, I'm, off, I'm, off, I'm off again. <laughs> um, so childhood trauma, actually the worst childhood trauma is when parents ignore their children. They might play with them, but they're on the telephone at the same time. Give me, if it's 10 minutes, just put everything down. Do what they want to do. For, just, but they're also adults, they're young adults. Give them freedom. Give them love. Give them touch. Look into their eyes. Don't look away from their eyes. Let, just look into their eyes. It only has to be 10 minutes a day, and then you, can, you want to do more, you do more. But don't spend all day with them. Don't spend all day with them uh, while you're on your telephone or anything else. Let them be. <clears throat> Let them be. Mm -hmm. Let them. You know, if a child, a child learns to walk, falls over, gets up, falls over, gets up, bangs head, falls over. Imagine, and then this hypothetical, an adult learns to walk. 
After the third time, we go, oh, stuff this. I'm not walking anymore, I'm too scared. Kids don't. Kids don't. We should be learning from our kids. It's like the Sente Seito, uh, Seito the Japanese, the, the martial art relationship, as the professor learns from the student, the student learns from the professor. So, a chart, but tra how, how would I describe trauma? Is an inflammation of the autoimmune system. And the, the worst trauma of all is when we bury it and we don't realize. So the, another big question, which I'm still working on, and it's all going to come into quantum gastronomy. This is, I've only announced it here. This is a work in progress. How do you get to people to realize that they have buried their childhood trauma? That will be the secret. Then it's not comfortable, but at least you've got something to look at it, and then you can do something about it. But if you think you're okay, well, you are okay. But you will stand more chance of losing your imagination and thus losing what it's losing being a human being. Mm. Thank you. I tried to keep that short, but <laughs> great question. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Heston Blumenthal. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Heston. Good.